Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're here with Throg and the Norskins, going to be taking on the spooky, scary skeletons of the Tomb Kings, led by Arkhan the Black. So let's go ahead and get to the army compositions. For uh, Throg Boy here, uh, in terms of his loadout, we've cut uh, dead, uh, sorry, Foe Seeker, but we have grabbed the Witch Tooth Crown for the area of effect Unbreakable, in particular against a faction with lots of terror-causing units, like the Tomb Kings, can be very useful. Frontline is a mix of Marauders with Berserkers, uh, as is typical for Norska. Um, let's see here, we do have the Icehorn Marauders out on the right flank, and the center is the Brutes of the Hound. We've got a Fmir Balefiend Lore of Fire, of course, for this matchup, since Tomb King Lords are weak to fire, and fire just generally is a pretty useful lore. We've got Cascading Fire Cloak, Flaming Sword of Ruin, and the Burning Head. In terms of other support here, we've got uh, two Fmir Warriors, one of them the Mist Stalkers, Regiment of Renown, and the other one is just a Fmir with Great Weapon for that sweet bonus versus large of 27, which is just massive. We've also got the Beast of Tashnar and Norskin Ice Wolves out on the side here, and one unit of Marauder Horsemen with Throwing Axes. For my opponent here, Arkan the Black obviously on foot, looks like he's got Spirit Leech and Soul Blight and uh, his items here, so I actually haven't covered this a whole lot since they changed it, and they changed it quite a while ago, but the Tomb Blade of Archon now spawns a uh, unit of Skeleton Warriors. It has more unit models than a standard unit of Skeleton Warriors, five charges, relatively long cooldown, but can help put out some extra bodies, um, and that's the effect that the Blade has now instead of healing. I like it quite a bit better. He also has Libra Mortis for that physical resistance, and ooh, actually has leadership now as well, so that's always nice. In terms of the rest of the army, he's got a Hero Titan here, which I actually like quite a bit against Norska. Uh, the Flaming uh, Magic Damage is going to be very good against Throg. He also has more Spirit Leech and, of course, two casts of Shem's Burning Gaze, which also does fire damage. So, again, good against Throg. He's got two Skeleton Archers, two Tomb Guard with Halberds, a front line of four Tomb Guard, a Kepper Guard on the flank. He's got the uh, Eyes of the Desert here, these Sepulchral Stalkers, and one unit of Skeleton Horsemen. So... Without further ado, let's get the battle into full gear. You can see we're going to be unfolding a bit of a skirmish phase here as the uh, Marauder Horsemen start to pull up. The uh, Spokal Stalkers are going to use their missile attack here on the Marauder Horsemen, but it doesn't do a whole lot to them. And you see how I'm kind of pulling through the side of their Arc of Fire so that they're continuously having to reposition if they want to keep firing. We're doing some pretty effective damage so far, uh, maybe about 5%, 10% of their HP uh, from those throwing axes. So... I uh, definitely like the Throwing Axes quite a bit in this matchup. There's really not a whole lot on the Tomb King's roster that can catch them, unless they take the uh, Followers of Nagash, in which case they can get the Dire Wolves for a bit of extra cost. But um, otherwise, the Tomb Kings don't really have anything Excuse me, that can catch your Marauder Horsemen. But uh, at this point, a little bit danger close here, but again, we're just trying to whittle down these guys as much as possible. They're definitely a threat to things like the Fimir and Throg with their anti-large armor piercing and really good stats here. I actually quite like Eyes of the Desert right now. But, um, yeah, they're going to be uh, pulling back here, definitely taking some damage. Bit unfortunate, but, ooh, looks like we actually do drop a unit model there, so they're down to 12 unit models. And uh, just kind of running the hounds around in the back, uh, trying to find an opening here. My opponent's going to be repositioning his archers to try and fire back, so we'll pull back slightly so we don't get shot up too much. And I'm going to decide to push forward with my infantry force after just a moment. I've figured... We can uh, take advantage of this skirmish situation as much as possible since I'm winning. Uh, and then, you know, we'll take the engagement when I feel like it's uh, comfortable or, or necessary. So, uh, yeah, at this point, still the hounds just kind of running around. You know, the archers continuously repositioning. Look like they're actually going to come up and start firing on my marauder line, which is what's going to uh, prompt me to start advancing here. But, uh, yeah, we've been able to do some really effective damage to those Spokal Stalkers, and I'm very happy with the performance of those um, Marauder Horsemen there. And we'll see. I mean, obviously, balance power is still very close, um, but definitely that initial skirmish phase kind of going in my favor there. Hounds uh, arrayed in the back there like uh, little sharks, just waiting for an opening. And uh, here comes Throg with the main line going up for a charge. You can see the uh, Marauders getting in here with their axes out already. Uh, obviously, Marauders will lose pretty hard to regular Tomb Guard, but the Berserkers, on the other hand, will do quite well. Um, the Kepper Guard here are going to get just mashed on by Fimir Warriors and uh, Berserkers. So, uh, I mean, they only have 50 armor baseline, so once they get hit by the Fimir, they go down to only 20. So the Berserkers, you know, they'll, any hits they get are going to be doing a lot of damage. Throg came through the center, tried to get on Arcan, but the Hero Titans here doing his uh, flaming stuff 
his uh, flaming attacks here. So that's going to be pretty uncomfortable for Throg. We do drop Cascading Fire Cloak to try and give him some more melee defense. He's, he's taking quite a bit of damage. He's got Spirit Leech and all that jazz. We dropped the uh, uh, Unbreakable Effect to make sure that nobody in this pocket routed. The uh, Witcher Tooth Crown, that is. But now that it's dropped, a lot of these forces are going to be tempted to ter be terrified away. Oh, it looks like it actually hasn't dropped yet. But uh, in the back line, we're trying to get on these archers with the uh, Beast of Tashnar here and the other hounds just to shut them down momentarily. The... Uh, Marble Horseman also kind of pulling up to the back line just to kind of chuck some axes here. They're going to be throwing, it looks like, at the Hero Titan. We pulled back Throg a little bit because he was taking more damage than I was comfortable with. A lot of the Marauders getting terrified and routed off at this point by the Superior uh, Tomb Guard. But this flank, on the other hand, has collapsed pretty badly. We've been able to cut through the Kepper Guard without too much issue. And, uh, well, it looks like they're actually falling back, but they're definitely suffering here. The Femir with great weapons will do very well against the Sepulchral Stalkers. It is going to be an attritious trade, definitely, with anti-large AP on both sides. But the Femir with the support of the Berserkers in particular, because Berserkers are relatively high DPS, once the uh, Sporkle Stalker's armor is sundered, then the Berserkers will be able to do a pretty decent amount of damage to them. You can see a Flaming Sword of Ruin going off in this pocket. Uh, Throg had pulled back and is now focusing directly on the Hero Titan with the uh, support of the Beast of Tashnar here. So, obviously, with his anti large AP, he's going to be able to lay a beating on the Hero Titan. And as long as the Hero Titan isn't attacking him directly, he should do pretty well in that aspect. Uh, you can see Shopti summons coming up at the back line, mucking up this flank with the uh, Mist Stalkers and these other Berserkers who had been doing very well. Icehorn Marauders have just been running around with their perfect vigor, um, just chasing after the Nehekarn Horsemen. But uh, at this point, I figured I needed them back in the battle, so we're going to bring them in in the late stage here. I, I really like doing that with Icehorn Marauders, just kind of sending them on a wild goose chase or even leaving them as a reserve until the late game. Because they have that perfect vigor, they'll keep fighting, and uh, regardless of if you send them on a wild goose chase, as long as they don't get beat up too bad, they can be very strong in a late game situation because of that vigor. But uh, you can see Beast of Tashnar that had routed off coming back to help out Throg Boy here. We're going to try and finish off. Ooh, man, he takes a nasty hit there, though, from the Hero Titan. But, uh, yeah, the scales and, and such definitely going to help out. But uh, we'll see. A Soul Blight going down there, sundering the armor and the weapon damage of a lot of the units in this pocket. The, uh, interesting to have the Soul Blight. I guess he was really looking to sunder the armor of the Famir so that he could use his archers to greater effect against them. I do like the pick of the Tomb Guard with Halberds quite a bit here. You can see the Famir have munched through much of the back line. Uh... They're getting caught up on the Tomb Guard now, which is definitely not ideal. Uh, the uh, Halberds of the Tomb Guard will be able to do some pretty good damage to the Femir, but uh, we're going to pull them free in just a moment. Another great Flaming Sword of Ruin going down. Arcan taking a whole lot of damage, though he is dishing some damage back to the Bale Fiend himself. But uh, yeah, the Skeleton Summons from Arcan definitely doing a good job at helping him protect. You can see the Bale Fiend's attacks are getting distracted a little bit because of the Skeletons nearby. But uh, he is going to be able to get a few swipes on Arcan there, but uh, he's going to get routed off. So a little bit unfortunate, but at this point, uh, Throg is in a very pitched battle with this Hero Titan. We've just about got it down, but uh, Throg is still taking some pretty severe damage. Although the Mist Stalkers, now coming as a backup, should be able to help finish this thing off here. We've even got the Femir with great weapons, and the Hero Titan goes down. So... Uh, with that, we're going to start pushing forward and trying to take out the last of the, you know, kind of high-value targets here. We've got the Skeleton Archers, uh, Arcan himself, and, uh, yeah, not a whole lot else. There are, there are the two units of Tomb Guard are still holding out. One of them pretty beat up, the other one relatively healthy, but... Uh, I mean, they'll do pretty well against the Femir, but especially with these Icehorn Marauders in here. The Icehorn Marauders are just really good in this matchup, I feel. Uh, they've got the juiced up attack from the effect from Throg at the moment. Uh, looks like that thing's in the way, but they do indeed have the fight or die. A nice burning head coming down from the uh, <laughs> Balefiend just before he gets routed off by the Horseman once more. Unfortunately, didn't quite catch the Archers fully, but... Uh, yeah, these, uh, these Tomb Guard are definitely going to be suffering with their Sundered Armor. The Ice Horns fighting in here. They've got the Femir mashing on them. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a bad day. Arcan, you can see... Whoa, I didn't... Ooh, that's a cool animation, man. I didn't know Arcan did that, but uh, it's just dispatching that Marauder with ease there. Getting in here, trying to support his uh, Skeleton Archers, but at this point, his army's suffering pretty badly. Arcan himself is pretty low on health, got beat up pretty bad by those flaming sort of ruins uh frog is not doing great either though his leadership's pretty shaky low on morale has been, get, been getting shot at by those skeleton archers so he hasn't had a chance to regenerate too much hp but uh, just swiping through several of those uh, skeleton horsemen there oh man yeah that's skelly bros in the wrong neighborhood but uh 
At this point, it's just a matter of time before army losses trigger for the uh, forces of the Tomb Kings here. So, yeah, a little bit unfortunate. I definitely think that this is a matchup that goes very well for Norska because they're kind of centered around killing monsters. And that means that the constructs that the Tomb Kings bring to the table uh, definitely aren't as effective in this matchup. Likewise, uh, of course, Norska has access to Lore of Fire, which means they're going to be pretty decent at taking out Tomb King's characters with that Flaming Sword of Ruin. They have some other options for fire damage as well. You can bring the, you know, the War Shrine and some other things. So, very fun stuff though. Well played to my opponent. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, yeah, my opponent definitely did pretty well, and I would definitely fine-tune a few things about his build. Probably cut down some of these Tomb Guard and go a bit with... Uh, with a bit of a cheaper and wider line. I also don't know that I'm crazy about Arcan in this matchup. I mean, the, the the Skeleton Summon is nice, but I really see that you could get some good value from the Lore of Nehekara here, especially if you're casting, like, the Incantation of Cursed Blades, for example, to give maybe your Hero Titan a bonus versus large. He's going to trade even better against someone like Throg. Or, you know, you can just generally buff your weapon damage and get some healing out of that. So maybe that would be more effective. I'd also be curious to see if you brought just a Light Wizard and just spammed Shem's Burning Gaze as much as possible to try and snipe out Throg. Uh, because, of course, it does fire damage. I do think that Throg is going to be the most common pick in this matchup. Wolfric, I think, would just get Spirit Leech down and Terrified away. And, and there's a lot to deal with Wolfric. But Throg, obviously, with his regeneration, a lot harder to kill. And, of course, he has the armor-piercing anti-large to be able to deal with the Constructs. So he's kind of a no-brainer in this matchup for me. Um, but, yeah, I do think that my opponent's build, if you were to fine-tune a little bit, I'd probably cut the Kepper Guard just because, again, fire damage. They will get run over by Premier pretty hard. Probably cut them and replace them with another Halberd. And then cheap out on the front line a little bit, get some Skeleton Spears and some more Skeletons, just some more bodies to throw. Um, and then, yeah, maybe bring Cetra instead of Arcan. You bring him on a horse, he's got that bonus versus large, and he has the Lord Nehekara as well. So, uh, just some things to think about. In terms of the army breakdown, though, uh, all the Berserkers did very well, cutting through a whole bunch of skeletons. Of Mir are also MVPs, 58, 88 kills. Uh, the Ice Wolves and the, the Beast of Tashnar were able to get in the back line and disrupt the skeleton archers for a bit. They did still get some effective fire, but uh, the Beast of Tashnar in particular coming back in that late game and helping... Helping Throgboy take out that Hero Titan was uh, definitely a good get for me. The Marauder Horseman did very well in that initial skirmish phase, did some great damage to the Eyes of the Desert there, but uh, after that they didn't contribute a whole lot to the battle. But uh, the Hero Titan, definitely a good pick in this matchup. I, I'd forgotten that that thing does uh, fire damage, and I mean, you also have the Regiment of Renown Necrosphinx, which has a, a proper bonus versus large, but it doesn't come with the support buffs, which is why I say, you know, maybe bring lore of Nehekara, because if you, again, if you overcast the uh, Joff's Incantation of Cursed Blades, then you can actually, whoops, you can actually get a bonus versus large on your Hero Titan, so you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, need to bring the Necrosphinx. You can still get, you know, anti-large armor piercing with flaming magic damage um, from that spell. So if we go ahead and take a look at uh, Cetra here, and I'd probably kit him out something like this, put him on the horse, so he retains his bonus versus large. Uh, we're going to keep Cursed Blades and Incantation of Protection and pretty much cut everything else. And I'd probably grab the Blessed Blade of Petra just because that blinded effect is super strong. And maybe the Crown of Nekar as well if you had some extra funds, but definitely in this guise. Uh, and then you can cast, again, this uh, Incantation of Cursed Blades here. Get that sweet uh, plus 16 bonus versus large, and then your uh, Hero Titan will trade more effectively against Throg. I mean, obviously, the uh, the Necro Sphinx is much faster, and, you know, just uh, generally, uh, overall, slightly better stats. Actually, not much better, and it actually has significantly less health as well, so I think the Hero Titan might be a better pick if you don't necessarily think you'll need the speed. But uh, certainly the speed is the main factor there, uh, difference between the two, besides the support buffs, obviously. The other thing about the Regiment Renown Necrosphinx in particular it does, is that it does have a bit of fire resistance, so if your opponent does bring fire damage um, and cast that Flaming Sword of Ruin, you know, in that big area of effect, the Sphinx of Usek is actually going to get a defensive bonus while that's active, so... A little bit of counterplay there, some some food for thought, but uh, definitely I think that uh, either of these two would be a solid pick for helping to take down Throgboy, and I definitely uh, definitely agree with that pick. So, well played to my opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. 
Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.